most biblical that they're both maybe drabbanan. Purim already is a discussion. Hanukkah is a pure drabbanan. In fact, that's why Chanu God they say Chanu Chavhei. The rest of the 25th, which means the 25th of Kislev, but they say Derek Drush, they rested on the, we know there are 24 books of Tanakh, Torah, Nadiyam, and Subim. There's 24 books. Hanukkah was going to be the 25th, but they closed up shop. They, so therefore, Hanukkah is a pure Durabanan. Purim, on the other hand, is a book Megillus Esther we're going to read and we know about. So that perhaps is an in-between. We know there's a, there's a concept of Divrei Torah, something mentioned in the, in the Chumash. We know there's something we draw banan, and there are minhagim, and then there's something in between the rights of the rabbanan from the words of the prophets, divrei kabbalah, not kabbalah, which is very popular today, it's kabbalah, but kabbalah meaning the words of the prophets. So it's a discussion in the in the achronim or the kiva eg or others on what is the status of divrei kabbalah. Is it a is it a lenient Torah law, or is it a more strict Rabbinic law, in other words, where does it fall under? Because we have different Gemaras seem to implying, on one hand we have the Gemara in Rosh Hashanah, which in a different context it talks about making, that if it's a mitzvah in Torah, we don't have to worry, so we don't have to make extra fence around things. But on a mid, Midrabana you do, so it says, Divrei Kabbalah ke Divrei Torah dummy. There's an expression that Divrei Kabbalah is like Divrei Torah. On the other hand, we have a Gemara in Kagiga, which seems to imply that it's only the Rabbanan. So, it's, so that's a discussion among the Akronim and which ties into Purim because by Hanukkah it's a pure Durabanan. In fact, that's why the question of Baltosif comes up. You know there's a biblical prohibition of adding to the Torah and taking away from the Torah. You can't Baltosif bal to, bal and Baltigra. So the Gemara and Megillah discusses the question by Purim. How do they have a right to make up a new halacha? We all know the classical about Tosef is putting a fifth parish in our tefillin, putting a fifth species on our rule of an estro. But what about adding a yanta? So that's what the Gemara discusses. Perhaps, how did Esther, Mordecai, how did they go ahead and make up a, a, a holiday of Purim? So the conclusion obviously is yes, don't worry, you can observe Purim this weekend. But it's a discussion in the Gemara. The so Rashi points out parenthetically, the Gemara never asked about Hanukkah. Why? Because Hanukkah is Durabanan. There's no conflict. The Torah says, well, so, so they give the right to the Chachamim to go ahead and, and it's clear that it, it's not about Tosa. By, by Purim, which is already Dibre Kabbalah, it's already entertained that it's a possibility about Tosa. But the conclusion is, that it's not about Tosef. But as we see in many areas in the Halacha that, that, the, that there's going to be a difference between Hanukkah and Purim because of Purim might have the status of Divrei Kabbalah. In fact, it's interesting, Be'er Yosef. The question is, and it's actually a Ramban in the beginning of, of Megillah, the Gemara of Megillah, actually it's interesting, Binyan Shlomo. The Shlomo we Vilna raises how many times in the Megillah does it say the word Purim? None. That's four. Is it? No, that's four, but there is no, a. No, wait, no, no, it's not two. So I didn't count it, but he says there are five times the word Purim. And he also says, I guess we could check when we read the Megillah later, is three times it's spelled Chaser, it's not spelled the full without the Vav. And twice it's spelled the full way pura. So he says, why is that? Why is it five times? And why is it three times chasher and twice mole? So he says, very nice. What's the first mission in the beginning of Megillah's thoughts? Megillah Nikrish, the Yidala, the Yidbei, the Yidgimel, the Yidala and Tezvav. That we don't have it today, but during the time in the Mishnah, they used to have a small town to the discussion Rashi posted exactly what, what the issue was, but they didn't have their own people, they couldn't do a Megillah, they didn't have a Megillah, they couldn't do a reading in their town, so they were coming in anyway on Monday and Thursday, so they made a special dispensation. So it says, they're, so during those towns, depending on when Purim fell out, they could either fall out on, they could either read the Megillah on the 11th, 12th, or 13th. 
And, you know, it's simple to have only the Megillah reading, the other mitzvahs they could do during the right day. But the Megillah reading, 11, 12, and 13, and we know we do on the 14th, and walled cities in the time of Yeshua ben Nun do it on the 15th. That's what he points out. There are two full days of Purim, regular days, the 14th and 15th, like we have here in the Yerushalayim. And the other three days are only partial Purim. They're not really Purim. It's only a special dispensation for Kriyat and Megillah. That's why he points out, interesting why it's five times. So the, so the Be'er Yosef and the Rambah, they point out, it seems very strange Purim. Purim is two days, we'll call it. We know, usually it's Torah Achasi, usually Chazal always concerned about unity, and then we'll see, that's what the whole essence of Purim is all about as well. But and it's Torah Achas, we try to have everyone celebrate the Yom Tovim together. All the Yom Tovim, we are celebrating wherever you live, you know, depending on the international daylight, you live in Israel, but it's the same day. It's the Yidaw, it's the Tezvav. And in Chutzlars, we have a separate Allah, the Yom Tov Sheni Shavoliyas, we keep an extra day. But fundamentally, it's the same day, so why is it the Chazal changed the rule by Purim. They said, you know what, depending where you live, I'll be most of us, most people in the world live, will read on Yudalai, but they split it up. What was the reason behind that Tachana? So, the Be'er Yosef writes of Yosef Salad, he writes because there was a concern about Tosef, that we know that any time the Chachamim added new halachas, they have to go out of their way to make sure that people don't think what I'm doing, because the Rabbi I'm right, you know, if you, if, if you, if, a, if, if the rabbis make up a law and they claim it's a biblical, that's also about Tosif. They can't, like mixing chicken and milk, they can't say it's a biblical law, that's a rabbinic law. So you have to be very careful when you make a rabbinic law that it's obvious to everyone that it's rabbinic. So that's what the Be'er Yosef points out. By Hanukkah we have something unique, by Hanukkah, we don't have any, any other mitzvah. We know there are three ways of fulfilling the mitzvah. There's the basic mitzvah, near issue beso, one candle per household. Every night of Hanukkah, if you lit one candle, no one can say you didn't fulfill your mitzvah near Hanukkah. The second level is mahadrin, is you add another, let's say you have 10 people in your house, so you light 10 candles every night of Hanukkah. And mahadrin and mahadrin is Let's say 10 times 8, if the 8th night of Hanukkah, you have 10 people, 80 candles. So they made something special about Hanukkah to show, to make it clear it's only a mitzvah to Rabbanan. So what do they do about Purim? So we write, that's why by Purim, they made it specifically Yiddawid for the non-walled cities, Tetzva for the others, to show that you'll know, that don't think there's a biblical law, it's only a rabbinic law, different Kabbalah, we're not adding to, we're not adding to the Torah. The Ramban, gives a different answer. He says, a very interesting Ramban, of, the Ramban asked the same question, he asked it first, and that's probably the Be'er Yosef got it, and that's, he gave a different answer. The Ramban says, you know what happened? That when the Jews were, were that year they were successful, they fought the war and won, so everyone together celebrated Purim. The walled cities and, uh, the non-walled cities, everyone celebrated the Simcha, Hoda, etc. But then the next year when they said, okay, now let's celebrate Purim, the walled cities said, we don't have to celebrate, we weren't really in danger. Again, walled cities wouldn't help today because we have planes and bombs, you could just drop it over the wall. But during those days, walled city was a protective city. So they didn't feel so much in danger by Helmut's decree because they felt they could protect themselves. So they said, we're not, we don't have to celebrate. So Mordechai got very upset. He said, what are you talking about? No Jew, no person, certainly no Jew lives in an island. That you have to feel the star of all Kayitro. And it was, an, it was an indictment on the wall of city. You know, when you think that you don't have to share, we're going to give you a separate day. We're going to give you a different day to, to observe Purim. To show, to, 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 and we want you to realize you also have to celebrate Purim. In fact, that's how salvation points out. Interesting in the Megillah, it seems when they first gave the mitzvah, they gave shalach manas. And, and later on, when they write the psukhan, they give, they add in matanas Yonim. So the Salvation explained, based on this Ramban, that originally, that, you know, was, everyone was celebrating shalach manas. And then later on, what happened was, because Mordechai got upset, 
These people think they're not part of Klai Yisrael, they're already in danger. Who are you kidding? If someone wanted to get to you, a walled city or not, you, you, you were going to get it because it wasn't from, because we know um, the Ikaman couldn't hurt us unless Klai Yisrael did something wrong. So they said, so, so what happened was, so Mordechai said, you're going to have your own day. And also, I see that people are lacking in feeling the Akhtas Yisrael. I'm going to institute Matanas Yonim as well, which is the whole concept of, as the Rambam writes in Hilchus Purim, that we know there's a tremendous mix of Simcha and Purim. And in fact, if you have to pick one day a year probably to eat meat, probably that's the day to do it. There's more of an Indian probably, uh, you know, many of you will be eating meat on Shabbos, Yantif, but I'm not saying not to. But that's eat meat on Shabbos and Yantif. But in terms of the pure halakha, it could be they have a, that a stronger here on to have meat on Purim. So Purim meal is in the Shal Yeah, because that gets into Ain Simcha today is El is tech in the when the base on Mikdash was up, Ain Simcha or Basava Yayin. Right. But today we seem to pass and again, the Ikara Din, not the Minog is Ain Simcha of Yayin. So in fact in Shokan Arach it's passed in let's say Cholomai. Every meal you eat on Yantif on Cholomai, you should have a bottle of wine. Not a bottle, have some wine. This you should have Bori Priya yeah. And of course it's rec it's rec it's praiseworthy to have meat, because meat we assume brings simcha. But in terms of pure that's why the Rabbam in fact if the Rav point out others, there seems to be a subjective simcha on Yantif because the Gemara says the men like the meat and potatoes, the women like the jewelry and the clothing, the kids like the candy. So it seems to be a subjective type thing. So it's not based on Mikdash Kayim, you couldn't get out of eating meat. And I'm not looking to get out of it either. But if I was, there, you'd have a problem then. When the base of is going to be built, you'll have a problem. But right now, Meikar a pure halacha, you have what to rely on not to eat meat. It's recommended in, in all the sort. You know, you should have meat unless different reasons, obviously health issues, you don't like the taste of meat, you know, different issues, but all things it's preferable, but at this point now, it's interesting, Al Pihalacha, Purim seems to be the most, you know, the bus of Ayayin seems to play, you know, key role in it. So they point out that, so what happened was, originally, they didn't, so he added the Mitzvah of Matana Zavion, because the Rambam writes that what's the greatest Simcha, we have a Mitzvah Simcha on Purim, what's the greatest level of Simcha? He says, you should minimize the food you're spending and all the shalach manas, not to minimize, you could spend all you want on, you spend all you want on the shalach manas and the suda, but make sure you have plenty of money to spend on it. It's more important, if you have to make a choice, if you don't have to make a choice, great. If you have to make a choice, you're in that budget, you should err on the side, more money goes to the poor. But what's the greatest simcha the Rambam writes? is gladdening the hearts of the orphans, the widows, the vol, the people who need help, giving to the poor people. And that's what, that's, you know, Purim's the holiday of giving. But all year round we have a mitzvah of tzedakah. But, but on Purim, the halakha is any one person who comes over to you, of course, if you know he's not, if you know he's not poor, then it's something else. But assuming that you walk, a person comes over and he's asking for a handout, so the halakha is on Purim, you go ahead and you don't ask questions, you give it. In fact, the Gemara equates the reading of Kriyat Kriyat Megillah with Matanas Rav Yonim. In the case of, we don't have it this year, and we can't have it here, have a Purim falling on Shabbos, the way the calendar is set up, but in Israel you can, in Yerushalayim. You can have a, what's called the Purim Meshulash. They have a three-day mm -hmm. Purim. So I think what they do is Megillah and Matanas Rav Yonim on Friday, then, you know, then Sunday, they have the Suda and the Shalach Manas, and on Shabbos, they do the, the Alan, they do the Alanisim and the, you know, the, they do the davening for Purim. So, how do we know that Matan Shalavim goes together with Megillah? So the Gemara tells, the Gemara asks in Megillah, why don't we read the Megillah when it falls out on Shabbos? But when, when it falls out on Shabbos, we, we, may, we read it on Friday. Why don't we read the Megillah? So there's a famous answer of Zerah the Rabba, the same reason why when Rosh Hashanah falls out on Shabbos, when Sukkot falls out on Shabbos, no Lulav today, no Shofar, no Megillah, because we're afraid it's going to lead to Chilo Shabbos. But the Gemara gives a second reason, perhaps by adding to it, because you know why? Because all year round, the Nayim, the eyes of the Aniyam are waiting. They can't wait for Purim. They know my Tanzah of Yodah. What's going to happen? 
They show up in Shabbos, well, Shabbos, I don't care about with me, and the disappointment, the, the sensitivity Chazal had, that they even did not want to read Megillah, Mitzvah, Midivrei Kabbalah, in order to, to not to take away the, the, the expectations. And that was the whole institution. Boy, I was very upset that Jews did not feel the ostrich with everyone else. We don't have to, we don't have to celebrate. We weren't in danger. Well, when Jew is in danger, every, you know, everyone's in danger. That's why, in fact, that's the famous Briskarov. There were three advisors to Paro. And they all got rewarded or punished, Mida, Kenegid, Mida. Who were the three advisors to Paro? So there was Yisro, Bilam, and Eo. So what happened to them? So Bilam said, kill the Jews. We have a Jewish problem. What should we do? Kill the Jews. So we know what happened to Torah tells us. Bilam ben Bohar, Harbul Bacharo, he was killed by the sword. And Yisro, what did he do? He just he couldn't take it, he just ran away. So Yisro gave up a prominent, he had a prominent advisor, he had a prominent position in Egypt. He ran away and, and he, later on he became prominent or his descendants came on the base of him, because I'll tell us different things that happened. So what about Eob, you know the whole story of Job, the one who lived a life of suffering? So what Eo was, he didn't say anything, he was silent. And so the question is, I understand Mida connected Mida when it comes to Bilam, when it comes to Yisrael. Bilam said, kill the Jews, he got killed. Yisrael gave up a prominent position, so he got one. But where's the connection? Eo's just sitting there quietly, not saying anything. In fact, the reason he was quiet is because he knew they weren't going to listen to him anyway. So that's what the Briska Rub explains. But he doesn't give this example, he says it, and he says it in Yiddish, so I'll say it in English and I'll give a different example. The one I like is that it happens at camp, that sometimes in your house, maybe at the workout place, but you're taking a hot shower and all of a sudden it just gets real hot. And like you jump out, you scream, ah, and your back's all red. So let me ask you, so does the scream make your back better? Of course not. But when it hurts, you scream. If other Jews are in danger and you're silent, that's lacking a feel for Klai Yisrael. In fact, that was the greatest of Moshe Rabbeinu. This coming from Zion Adar, we just had the birth, the birth and the death of Moshe Rabbeinu. That, that's why, in fact, that's what power of miscalculate is. You know what? Moshe Rabbeinu, got good he's, he's representing the Jews. He didn't go through slavery. He was in my palace. He's not going to know what it's like to go through what they went. And he thought that the greatness of Moshe Rabbeinu was even though he didn't go through the slavery and all the enslavement, he was able to be no siocha, he was able to feel the pain. And that's what Mordechai said, it was an indictment on the walled city. They felt that safe and no, we're going to show you, you know, it's a, it's a negative, we're going to give you a separate day to realize that there was a mistake. And that's when he also went to do, if you notice the psukim, only later on, my father's Lavionim is added. So that's the difference in the psukim later on. First, it was according to the, the Rav Salvation, and others, it was added later on. It was part of Mordechai's Tachana about showing um, the, the purpose of Purim. And in fact, that's what Michelle Achmanis is all about. The Pasuk says, uh, so in fact, is, uh, we know that Allah is by Matanas of Yonim, you have to give to two Aniyim. It's at least enough to, you know, they assume, um, strictly speaking, it doesn't have to be that much, but it's, it's enough to that he should have a Suda. So again, it doesn't have to be a 398 West Suda, then it could be a pizza shop Suda. But the point is, it should be enough food that he could have a meal, and you give to two different Aniyam. And in mean, Shalach Manas, usually not most of us don't have that issue, but strictly speaking, it's only, you only have to give minimally to one person two gifts. So the Ramah raises an interesting question. But is that two gifts with two different brachas or the same brachas? Right, so, so strictly speaking, you know, um, it doesn't think it has to be two different, um, I've seen some bring down two different brachas, I don't know any source for two different brachas, like yeah. a salami and a kolk, but you know, basically it's shnei manos, it has to be two different, um, two different foods. Right, well, you know, if you want, it doesn't know. So again, we'll see, it's preferable should be things that someone's going to use at the Suda, as I'll get to right now, yeah. and I get to behind the reason for Shalom Manas right now, is this interesting Ramah. The Ramah brings down that let's say you only offer one Shalom Manas, and you go to the person and, you, and he says, thanks, but no thanks, my wife will kill me. I have all, this, all these chips and candy, and look, this, um, I'm not going to take it. 
Are you, do I get my mitzvah? This is my only show of money that I'm giving. Do I get my mitzvah? So let's go back and understand the nature of show of money, then we'll try to answer the question. There's a famous dispute between the Trumas Hadeshin and the Manos Halevi. It's hard to say it's a dispute between them because the Trumas Hadeshin is a classical posseg. And the Manos Halevi, anyone who knows who the Manos Halevi was, it's Rav al -Kabaz. He was in Svat with the Kabbalists. He's authored our Friday Night Live, Lechal Dodi. You could thank him for our long Friday nights, or thank him, I should say, for our Friday night service. So, he would, so you know, the class and sober brings it down, but we just use these two schools of thought. But one's a classical posting, one isn't. But, so they discuss what is the nature of the mitzvah of Shalach Mana. So, the, so there are two basic schools of thought. The true Vesadeshen says the purpose of Shalach Mana is for the Suda. We know there's a mitzvah of having a Suda, a meal on Purim. So that's why Shalach Manas, as the Magen Abram brings down others, should ask to be foods that they can eat, whether fish, liver, chicken soup, kala, try to make foods that's ideal that people can have for the Suda. But minimally, at least it has to be food. And the Manas Halevi says, no, that's not the purpose of Shalach Manas. The purpose of Shalach Manas is kind of like Matanas Zavionim. In fact, some point that that's part of the basis also. It's like Matanas Zavionim is to make sure you have money. So too, 